Hey guys, what's up? So I know pretty much all new M1 Max have this issue where the read and write speeds of external storage drives are very slow. The advertised speeds of the SSDs are basically cut in half on the M1 Max. Today I'm going to show you how to fix that. So stay tuned to the entire video and I'll show you all the products and I'll do some speed test comparisons. Big thanks to OWC for sending me their 14 port Thunderbolt 3 dock to review. It so happens that it fixes one of the M1 Mac Mini's biggest problems. It goes for under $250 on Amazon. This is the space gray color. It's also available in silver. I'll leave a link to everything shown in this video in the description below if you want to check them out. Here's the power cable. This is your Thunderbolt 3 cable so you can connect the dock to your M1 Mac. I have the M1 Mac Mini, so that's what I'll be setting this up with. This is the power supply for the dock, so just plug the power cable into it and connect it to the dock. Now let's unwrap the dock and see what it looks like. If you love having a lot of different ports for easy access, trust me, this dock is for you. Here it is, beautiful design. Let's get all this plastic off. On the bottom, you have four of these little rubber pads to keep the dock in place on your desk so it doesn't slide around, which is pretty cool. Make sure to peel the top plastic piece off also. For size comparison, it's a bit shorter in height compared to the M1 Mac Mini. On the front, you have a micro SD card slot, a regular SD card slot, headphone jack, USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, and a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port. On the back, you get four additional USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 ports, a digital audio output, gigabit ethernet port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a mini display port, and a power port. Overall, it looks and feels pretty high quality. If you work with a lot of photos and videos, this Thunderbolt 3 dock is a must have. No need to have four or five different accessories plugged into your Mac. Now it's time to run some speed tests. This is my USB-C Hajibis hub and one terabyte Samsung SSD. The hub is plugged directly into the M1 Mac mini for this test and then I'll test it on the OWC dock. Here are the advertised read and write speeds of my Samsung SSD. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube can show the video to more people. Here's the speed test tool. Go to select target drive, select the SSD and click open. Now we click start and see what we get. So we're getting over 330 megabytes per second on the right. and a little over 300 megabytes per second on the read, so a big difference from the advertised speeds, and this only happens on the new M1 Max. Now I have the hub connected to the USB 3.1 Gen 2 port on the OWC dock. Click start and see what we get. So over 380 megabytes per second on the right, which is faster, but still not fast enough. Stay tuned to the video, as your mind will be blown away with the speeds I get. We're now getting over 400 megabytes per second on the read, which is faster than connecting it directly to the Mac mini, but that's still not fast enough, so let's do some more tests. Let's try something different. Here's my Samsung SSD. I'll connect it to the M1 Mac mini with this SATA cable and see what we get. Here it is plugged in, so let's run some speed tests. Click start. So now we're getting over 390 megabytes per second, but you know the drill, that's still not fast enough. I know some of you guys need all the speeds you can get for your workflow, so I'm here to help with that. On the read, we're getting over 360 megabytes per second. That's almost half the advertised speeds, so let's do some more testing. Let's plug it directly into the USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 port on the OWC dock and see what we get. Click start. Only 340 megabytes per second on the right. Don't worry, stay tuned, I'll get it exactly where it needs to be. 
a little over 360 megabytes per second on the read. Let's move on to the next test. I just wanted to show you the results connected with different devices. Now this is where things get better for the M1 Mac Mini. I just bought this USB 3.1 Gen 2 hard drive enclosure. It has some vents for cooling. The brand is called Cable Matters and the transfer speeds are up to 10 gigabits per second. It only costs $20 on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. Just slide the back piece off and put your SATA SSD inside. It comes with a Type-C USB cable and a USB-A to USB-C cable. But I bought a longer Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 cable to connect it with just so I can move the SSD enclosure further around on my desk. Let's put it together and then I'll run some speed tests from the Mac Mini and OWC dock. It's very easy, just slide it in there. The small size makes it great for travel, just put it in a bag and you're on your way. Looks pretty good, what do you think? So I'll connect it to my M1 Mac Mini with the Type-C cable that came with it. Here it is plugged in, let's do some speed tests. Click start. So we're only getting over 370 megabytes per second on the right. I'm telling you, I don't know what Apple did with these M1 Macs for them to be reading external USB storage drive this slow, but stay tuned, I'll show you faster speeds and prove it's an issue with the M1 Max. Now let's connect it to this OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock. I'll use the USB 3.1 Gen 2 port on the front for this test. You can also use the Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back and it works just the same. Let's plug it in and see how it does. Click start. Wow, just look at that. Over 500 megabytes per second on the ride speed. That's super impressive. Look at that, over 530 megabytes per second on the read speed. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it everywhere. So to get the maximum read and write speeds out of your external SSD, you need this OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 SSD enclosure, not Gen 1, and use the USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port on the front of the dock, or use the Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back of the dock. So let's connect the other devices to the Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C Gen 2 ports and see if we get any improved speeds. Okay, so now we're going to put the SSD back inside the Hajibis hub and connect it to the Thunderbolt 3 port on the OWC dock and run some speed tests and see if we get faster speeds. I can put the cover back on there, but I won't for this test. Click start. So we're getting over 380 megabytes per second on the right. And over 430 megabytes per second on the read. So the speeds are faster through the Thunderbolt 3 port than when it was connected directly to the M1 Mac Mini, but not as fast as the new SSD enclosure I got. Next up, let's connect the SATA cable to the USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port and see what speeds we get. I could also connect it to the Thunderbolt 3 port on the back of the dock. But wait, that SATA connector is USB-A. No worries, I got a fix for that too. Let's connect this SSD first, then I'll show you how to get around that. Just use a USB-C to USB-A adapter like this. And simply plug the USB-A end into it like this. Then plug the USB-C end into the dock. Pretty handy stuff to have. Speed test time. Click start. We're getting over 400 megabytes per second on the right. Again, much faster than connecting it directly to the M1 Mac Mini. So if I had a Type-C SATA cable, then I'm pretty sure the speeds would be a bit faster because by going through the little USB adapter, it loses a bit of speed, but not much. And the read speed is over 420 megabytes per second. So that SSD enclosure is still the better option if you want maximum speeds. This is how I have everything set up on my desk currently. Overall, the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock is very good. It fixes the speed issue and it also provides more ports to use daily rather than having to connect multiple adapters to your M1 Mac Mini. 
So you could definitely incorporate this into your workflow for a more seamless macOS experience. You can also connect up to a 5K display to the Thunderbolt 3 port on the dock, which is very cool. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you want to see more exclusive behind the scenes content, you can join my channel membership and become a super fan of the channel. It also has a lot more perks. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at LamarMK. As always, thanks for watching, stay safe, and peace out.